Yeah, so let's just warm up, no matter how difficult it is right now, and get a kind of dialogue going. I was talking yesterday about this sentence, the world's music, an artist's claim, how we might interpret it. An operation suggests itself that we can perform on the concepts and the message. <clears throat> if an artist says, the world is music, then we can cast each concept into its interrogative dimension. A concept like world, primarily spatial, would be cast to where, while music, a mainly temporal art form, notwithstanding that sound travels through space, would be cast to when. Coming back to the original sentence, the world's music, then it reduces to the where is the when. So we've caught a kind of contradiction, which is one problem with the artist's claim. But as is typical with artistic claims, there's a kernel of truth or a kind of um, deeper message that tries to mm, show itself through a contradiction or even a paradox. I think if this artist is saying that historical knowledge is um, more important than physics or mechanics, optics, and so on, propagation of bodies through space, light, waves, and so on, that instead the primary phenomena to be considered are events, and that these alone, or that these primarily constitute world, then yes, he can say the world's music, but then he should also say that, hmm, world is actually primarily a temporal phenomenon, not, pri not primarily spatial. And yeah, uh, do we see any other problem with this? I was thinking, I'm not entirely convinced right now, but I was also thinking that if the artist is saying that, hey, um, music or history or some kind of, eh, I guess some kind of temporal knowledge, again, is more valuable than any other kind of knowledge, such as physics, for example, with its causes and effects by things hitting other things or bigger things attracting smaller, as by gravity, for example. We're gonna have to backtrack, but uh, the artist is saying that, hey, um, music is um, my first idea or my most valuable concept, but I'm gonna say that the where is the when, not um, the how much or some absolute value independent of other things is, um, so music is my most important concept. This is a bit difficult to explain, but the flaw, not the deal breaker, but the flaw is that he's using the oppositions, uh, the oppositions understanding of value to express a contrary highest value. Simply put, he wants to say that the interrogative dimension when is more important than where but because the opposition prizes where above all other interrogative aspects, that's its how muchness, you know. He's actually, um, yeah, he's actually using the currency or the coins 
of his opposition to say what his highest value is or what his biggest how muchness is. I'm not sure if any of this matters all that much. See my eyes going here, there, everywhere. I'm trying to talk through this interpretation, maybe misinterpretation of a juvenile sentence to, on the one hand, yes, spot a contradiction, but also on the other hand, to show that this artist, he's attempting to revalue all values in terms of interrogative mentions where, when, why, what, and so on. He's trying to revalue each of these and say that the plane of when more important than all others, sure. But he's calling it the where, even as he wants to deprecate the where or, or concepts that fit into this inter interrogative category. He's, he wants to deprecate, for example, metaphorically speaking, the US dollar as a currency. And he's saying, well, my currency is worth more dollars than the dollar. So he hasn't um, achieved a, a higher level abstraction of currency rather than say currency, he's saying dollars, for example, greenbacks. And since this is so long, um, I also want to touch upon some numerical criticism that is shown, I think, by this cast. Numerical criticism, not any interrogative criticism anymore. We've talked about question dimensions or something. I'm not sure what term to use for these, but remember, an interrogative dimension is an aspect of action. For some reason, I invoke action singularly in events, plural. Action could be your action, my action. I'm not sure what number to assign to it by nature. But um, yeah, if I were to devise some world system, this is actually what I would propose, that action more important than any world or setting or whatever, um, which would be relative to events or actions and so on. Just as in any novel story, the, the setting is different. And, um, for, and you could say that the heroes in a myth, for example, they're more important than the exact setting. It could take place in Troy. It could take place in Rome. It's not so, it's not so important. Getting back to this numerical criticism, maybe finishing before the 10 minute mark, the sentence, the world is music, it not only fails to question whether world is the most important concept in a philosophy, it might be, sure, most general, but I think nonetheless it's primarily spatial. But, you know, that goes back to the interrogative criticism. criticism. The uh, artist fails to question whether this op opposition term, world, is singular or not. So he kind of acquiesces to the enemy's or the opposition's valuations, the opposition's way of, of uh, valuing each interrogative dimension by saying, yeah, uh, I kind of agree with you that the where is um, the most important interrogative axis <laughs> or dimension. And m moreover, it's also singular. Um, there is some singular spatial concept overriding or including all others. He's not operating, for example, in a Christian mindset, this world and the other world, um, whereby the concept world is at least dual, so that the monotheistic God can be the main singular concept. Not that I'm advocating that solution, as I said earlier. I prefer to say that action, rather than any interrogative dimension like who, where, when, who, you know, maybe God, where, maybe world, when, time, for example. I wouldn't want to concede to any of those to be uh, the main, I guess, root idea from which all others spring or on which all others depend. 
if I were to, you know, build a philosophical system. I'm really not. I'm trying to criticize any philosophical system through a critique of some sentences that I wrote maybe 20 or so years ago that I'd like to use as raw material or, um, I guess, rock to refashion, maybe sculpt a little bit, but just as an exercise. So, <laughs> trying to go back to the numerical criticism. The world is music. Both concepts are invoked singularly without any qualification. Yes, we're tearing the sentence from its original context, but I don't think that the artist or the um, juvenile prattler um, laid out these premises or considered, well, should we naively invoke concepts singularly, which I think in Freudian terms is substitute gratification for worshipping monotheistic god. It's some substitute. It's a pattern of speaking that an atheist would fall into because he still has some theistic desires. I think Schopenhauer speaks of man's need for metaphysics. Maybe that hmm, expression or title relates to what I'm trying to say. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so the where is the when if we were to say it that way, too. It allows for um, some kind of absolute space and some kind of absolute time, or an all-encompassing world or an all-encompassing time. Um, yeah, as kinds of hmm, freestanding beings that encompass all others. It, it wants or allows these to be. And why is that problematic? It's kind of beyond the scope of this video. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's problematic or not, but it's something, oh, it's something to point out for sure. And I, I think the problem with that kind of thinking, um, because it's, it's too, it's a twofold problem. Um, if you say the where is the when, then you're, yeah, you're, you're assuming that dimensions of action are more important than action itself. That's something I take issue with. You could disagree, but that's fine. Um, and is there, what is the other problem? Yeah, I forget if you made it this far, um, someday I'll try to compress this 13 minutes into a one minute short if I actually understand what I'm saying. And when I reach the point that what I have to say, if not nothing at all, isn't saying itself through me, but I can kind of control it and um, offer morsels and crumbs of it here and there. That's enough.